thank you so much for being here today. We're super excited to have you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Well, my name is James Michael Bailey. And if you go to Amazon, <laughs> I got OCD about my book. So it's called The Diary of a Manic OCD Bookseller. And Mel Brooks, Oscar winner, has a blurb on the cover. And so does Mr. Heckles from Friends. The TV show is a good friend of mine. So, all right. So that was enough of my plugging for now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> Love that. Well, what are your books about? Well, this last book is about how I, uh, I had OCD really bad. You know, I couldn't just beyond uh, control. So I wrote about that in my first book, which Adam Sandler almost did the movie about. It was called Man Interrupted. And then the second book was is called Almost Texas. And I talk about Moorhead Fargo in that book. But this is my new book, and I'm trying to get a movie deal. It's the diary, the one I just told you about. It's basically how I was living in my car in L.A. And one day I'm meeting Pierce Bronson, who's buying my book, and Bob Dylan. And the next day I'm living in my car, and a homeless guy tries to kill me. So I go from up and down you know, so my adventures for lack of a better word i love that what inspired you to write your book well what happened i, I actually i went to this famous ocd clinic i had it so bad and i called mel and i was telling him all these crazy stories where i was pretending to i go hang out with homeless people because i was afraid of germs so they're not big on hygiene right? And more or less. So I would shake their hand and try to hang in there without washing my hands, you know? So yeah. And then I started, I had an irrational fear of drugs. So I started running around with drug dealers. <laughs> so, you know, and then they finally said to me, Hey, Jim, you talk about drugs all the time, but you never do drugs. So they thought I was a narc. <laughs> so it's a pretty funny book. <laughs> funny. I always laugh at my situations, you know? Yeah, so this third book is basically how I made it my first book a bestseller, how I would do like I'm doing, always promoting, couldn't couldn't stop myself. So I used the OCD in that way. I would go to a bookstore and I'd see somebody near my book and I, or put my book near them. I said, hey, you should read my book. I'm like, You're the author. Yeah, a lot of times people are excited to meet an author. So I said, well, they say, well, if you autograph it, I'll buy it. Oh, yeah, of course. So I get to do that. I get on the bus, go to another bookstore. I just couldn't be stopped. So I ended up making a bestseller. So that's how I, I tell my stories, you know. And I was still living in my car, as crazy as itself. I love that. That's yeah. very unique. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy is a better word, but that's, you're being kind. <laughs> oh. when, when you were writing your book, did you have someone in mind who you were thinking of when it comes to who the book is for? Uh, not really. I, well, I was an actor before I started writing. So my thinking was, if I write a great book, I think they'll make a movie and I'll have to be in the movie or I won't sell the book. So that was kind of my crazy thinking, maybe. I don't know. Oh. It's such a competitive business, the movie business. So you need to come in, in for lack of a better word. Okay. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start writing? Well... I like I said, I was an actor. I went to acting school in Hollywood and uh, became friends with Mel, which is another crazy story. I used to sneak in the studios, all the movie studios all the time. And this guy comes up to me. He goes, are you insane? And I thought, oh, Lord, uh, who's you know behind my back? <laughs> I turn around. I think it's security or something. It was Mel Brooks. He goes, are you freaking crazy? You're here every freaking day. You got the same clothes on. He said, I just wonder if you're insane or something. <laughs> so it was true. I had a cheap suit I bought for 50 bucks on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, yeah, I said, no, I'm an actor. I'm trying to meet people, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, that's not the way to do it. You know, if I notice it, security is going to notice it, right? So he said, don't come back here anymore. I said, okay. Of course, when he left, I kept do what I was doing and true story the next day I had an audition for Charlie's Angels and uh, I had a pass to Fox Studios so I thought well it's a giant studio I'll never see Mel you know so I'm walking in there and here comes Mel and his Rolls Royce and he sees me shakes his head in negativity I run over the Mel I got a pass I'm legit blah 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 and he goes well tuck your freaking shirt in <laughs> and we've been friends ever since so that kind of led me to writing because I acting I was getting small parts but I you know I wasn't getting those parts where you say there's that guy you know that kind of thing so I talked to Mel and he said well if you write something like I started writing movie scripts 
you get power. You know, you have they have to listen to you. So that's kind of how the writing began. I love that. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Well, uh, when I'm like now, I'm in Louisiana. I I go to library at night and uh, I promote all my books. I can't stop doing that. And then I start. I'm writing another book, so I make myself get onto that. You know. So I'm kind of, and when I'm in LA, I'm more or less, I'm not writing, I'm always promoting. Cause you know, I go to Malibu and you might meet a producer at a coffee, you know, you never, you see a guy writing something, you think, well, he's in the movie business. So, you know, so that's how I got my first movie deal walking around Malibu. So, yeah. So it's, I put all that in the book, by the way, in the new oh, book. So, love that. Um... <laughs> What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Uh, well, right now I'm going to this college library on the second floor and there's nobody there really but me. So okay. <laughs> that keeps me focused. And then I have a lot of guilt. You know, I think guilt is stronger than drugs. You know, if I don't do something pr- productive, I feel you know guilty. Like, oh, you know, wasting time, life's bad. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have to use your little psychology in whatever you do, I think favorite writing snack or drink oh dr pepper (laughs) (laughs) i actually say in my first book if i have a dr pepper and a snickers that i could get by it every day somehow you know (laughs) so because i was so poor back then i was doing that (laughs) love it diet doctor you want to hear a good fargo story yes are you from uh grand forks or you just happen to show up in north dakota or what um, we're in Grant out of Grand Forks now. We're not originally from here. Where are you racing from? Uh, kind of all over. We moved here from New Mexico. Oh, okay. You ever been to Las Cruces? <laughs> I think we went once. Because I always stopped there on my way to LA. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I get good ideas when I take those road trips from Louisiana to LA. When you get out in the desert, New Mexico and all that, you start thinking about, ah, oh, this would be a book. This would be a movie, you know, so... I take a lot of road trips, but here's a good Fargo story. This is many moons ago. So I'm 19 and I'm drinking a lot and uh, working these day labor jobs, you know, flunky kind of deal. And I had no place to live. And I saw this cheap hotel and I walked up to the room and this guy, I said, well, how much do you charge? He goes, $7 a week. Is that seven dollars a week? <laughs> he goes, Do you want to see the room? I said, No, no, that's fine. <laughs> seven bucks, you know, who cares, right? So I go in the room and it's, you know, it's got graffiti and everything, <laughs> things you expect for that. And I'm in that room and a guy next door, old man, knocks on my door. He goes, didn't say hello or anything. He says, How long have you been a tramp? <laughs> so 19, I don't even really digest that. I go, well, Why do you say that? He said, Well, you asked. And you pay for the room, and he asked you if you want to see it. And you said, no, I'll just take the room. <laughs> you know? So that's a good Fargo story. Love it. So what type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Well, you know, my favorite author is that John Krakauer. He does Into the Wild, all those kind of true story kind of things. Because he goes really into detail. What, like, what the guy did in first grade, I mean, he really you know, good does a lot of research and he tells it good, like into thin air. I've read all his books. Oh, um, are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Ah, Jack Kerouac on the road. Cause I'm always on the road. And I, 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 yeah, I actually put this in my new book. I I take (laughs) risks crazy. And I picked up this hitchhiker and he had a Jesus sign. You know, I always fall for that. Jesus loves you. you know? So I gave him a couple bucks and he weighed about 300, 400 pounds, real heavy guy. And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm headed to LA. He said, well, I'm going to San Diego. He said, can I catch a ride with you? Now, part of my brain says, no. You know, <laughs> and I, so I don't do the norm. So I said, yeah, sure. Why not? You know? So he gets in the car and I know Senior got in the car and he stinks so bad. I couldn't drive. I had to stick my head out the window. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, what the hell did I get myself in? And then he said, he kept talking about the Bible. I go, where is your Bible since you're a big Christian? He goes, well, somebody stole it. <laughs> so 
I've never heard of that. But anyway, and then he said, somebody stole his glasses. And I said, okay. You know, so I'm trying to make conversation. And finally, I just pulled over. I said, man, you got to get out. <laughs> I can't, the smell, I, no offense, I couldn't do it. He said, well, I'm not getting out. <laughs> so, so now I got a 400 pound whale in my car. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, he ended up stealing my glasses. <laughs> So it's good for the book, but it, I don't uh, tell people to pick up Hitchhiker. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a twisted sense of humor. I think I kind of laugh whenever I get in predicaments, you know. I love that. My dark comedy, I guess, would be my specialty. What type of books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Oh, uh, that's a good one. Maybe Catcher in the Rye. On the other side of that, now as an adult, do you have a favorite series or book that if something comes out, you're going to automatically grab it? Anything Krakauer writes, I basically get it. You know, that guy, he's my only guy that I just, you know, I, now I get books on tape because I travel a lot. I mean, so, yeah, and he actually did that one about uh, that guy who played for Phoenix Cardinals and the 9-11 hit and he joined this. He was patriotic, so he passed up millions of dollars to join the service because of patriotism and he ended up getting killed in friendly fire and so that kind of stuff i like you know he goes into his how he got to this point you know point a point b you know that kind of thing so i like true stories i guess would be the is my thing memoirs that kind of thing love that what would you tell someone just starting out with reading again well i would tell them to read my book <laughs> You know, you should know that by now. <laughs> the Diary of a Manic OCD Bookseller. And let me know if you read it. My email is jamesjimmy122 at yahoo.com. And if the movie really takes off, I'll invite you to the premiere. So you can't beat that. 10 bucks. It's worth the investment. Love it. What would you you got to read it too. Now I'm counting on you. Yes. Because <laughs> you read. Now you know the author. You've got no excuse. Yes. Um, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Oh, wow. Here's, yeah, here's what I like, because I run into people all the time. A lot of people want me to write their book. And, I, and this is a good story. Years ago, I, I was writing movie scripts, right? And Mel Brooks at that time was really big. You know, he had History of the World. He had uh, Young Frankenstein, all these big movies. And he read my script. He said, Jim, I love your script. I said, well, great. He said, do the movie. You're Mel Brooks, right? He said, Jim, I do Mel Brooks movies. I don't do Jim Bailey's movies. So I thought, oh, okay. I was mad, but now as I got older, I get it because I have people coming up to me. Oh, Jim, will you write this book? I got this great idea. And I say, I do James Bailey's books. I don't do your book, you know? So it kind of got full circle on that. But uh, yeah, I, I would tell somebody who wants to just starting out writing or whatever, Try to find a book that's somewhat in your genre, you know, so you have an idea. And I think especially your first book, you should do small chapters. That way you you could you get confidence, you know. Because if you have to have a real long chapter, you might stop. So I can't go on, I can't do this, you know. You have to play little tricks on your mind, you know. <laughs> Even though you're still doing the work, but it seems easier. How about that? Love that. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Wow. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, it's funny. When I was in the sixth grade, I was weird. I mean, I remember the teacher telling me I was weird. So <laughs> now I was insulted, but now I take it as a compliment. So <laughs> a lot of people are surprised that I've lived in my car. You know, I don't look like the typical street person, for lack of a better word. But I like the street people because I may get, I, you know, I write, write about them, you know, in, in some way, you know. Is there anything you would like to say or add? No, but you look great. You're doing a great job and uh, you ask good questions. Oh, thank you. Um, so where's the best place for readers to find your books? I know a lot of readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Okay. Uh, yes. Anybody? I'm very actually in my book. I say if somebody urinated in my face, but they bought my book, I would, wouldn't be mad at them. I mean, I'm, not, I'm very loyal to anybody who reads my book, for lack of a better. 
So if you read my book, my email is jamesjimmy122 at yahoo.com. And also, if you went to Facebook, you put James Bailey author or James Bailey author man interrupted, you see a picture of me and Mel Brooks at his studio. So that's one, another way. But anyway, getting the book, you could go, you could, uh, the cheapest is Amazon or it's 10 bucks, I think, at Amazon. And if you went to a bookstore, if they didn't have it, they'd order it for you, and, you know, so you could get it either way if it's more convenient for you or if you don't use Amazon or something. And it's on eBay and all that stuff too. So I'm just, whatever, you know. Well, where are you going to get my book, by the way? <laughs> we, uh, in our house, we're Kindle readers. So, we- ah, no, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you got to make a special case for me now. Get the book. Okay. <laughs> and I actually have found out I didn't do the Kindle version, and somebody told me there's, there's some, some grammar mistakes on the Kindle, so I don't promote that anymore. You know, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> good to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> no because i'm obsessed about perfection i wouldn't do that you know <laughs> yes not intentionally for sure but amazing well thank you so much for being here today we're so excited we got to interview you we'll be sure to drop your information in the show notes and thank you again so much oh one last thing adam sandler almost did my movie he had the script for about six months so i thought wow this is good even though jim carrey was my first choice from my first book man interrupted but adam turned it down the last minute so that's show business right (laughs) nice talking to you